Guys, I don't know about you, but wasn't that amazing? Why don't we put our hands together again and thank everybody that shared their story. And listen, if you are part of this church, and you've been part of this church for a while, this is why we do what we do. This is why we give. This is why we show up week in, week out. This is why we, we think and we strategize and we, we, we wrestle with one another and we think about worship style and sounds and, and events and how are we connecting with people. This is why we do what we do. And anything, anything and everything is worth it if more and more people get to say what they got to say today. And you know, our prayer, and we prayed this morning in a circle that we do every week uh, before you guys all get to show up, we're at the back and we pray in a circle. And we prayed that in this week, during this week of Easter, that people would come and maybe people will get dragged along by somebody or they will get forced by their parents or whatever as you heard. But maybe in a few months time, those people will be up here telling those kind of stories. This is why we do what we do, guys. And I want to thank you for journeying with us as a church and for all that you do. Many of you in this room, you serve week in, week out. That's why you do it. You are part of all of this incredible stuff that we're going to celebrate today. And I don't know about you, but I think it's worth it, don't you? Absolutely worth it. And you know, in a, in a, in a few minutes, we're going to open up the jacuzzi, as Andy likes to call it, the baptistry here. And uh, we're going we're gonna to baptize Michael. And, 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 and Michael, I want to say, well done, mate. Well done, mate. Incredible courage. Incredible courage. All of the people that are taking part this morning. And then at the second service, we'll be baptizing a, a lot more people as well. But why, why are Christians, what, and, and Michael said he's been to many baptism services in the last two years, why are we always dunking people in water? Uh, what is all that about? You know, Jesus was only on the earth um, uh, in, in physical form for 33 years. And there was only three of those years when he was public. And um, he began that public period by getting baptized. He finished that public period by telling his disciples, his followers, to go into all the world and to do the same thing. So that baptism bookended that three years of Jesus' kind of public ministry. What does baptism mean? If you went back in time 2,000 years ago to the days of Jesus, you'd hear a Greek word that was used in everyday language to describe a variety of situations. The, the, the word was the word baptizo, which has literally been pulled across into the English language as baptism. And baptizo literally means to immerse, dip or dunk. Back in the day, it was used to describe ships that sunk in the sea or cloth dyed in a certain colour. One ancient Jewish historian even described a man that was murdered by baptism. He was drowned. We're not going to do that today, all right? Those of you that are getting baptized. So the word baptizo was an everyday word. It was like submerged in water. Oh, so, so, you, so, so a ship was baptized. And, uh, you, you kind of pottery and uh, crockery was baptized in water. That's literally what it meant. There was no religious significance whatsoever. Kids were playing in a river and they would baptise one another in the river. That's what it meant. And then one day this guy called John appeared on the scene and he began baptising people, but this was different. John said that baptism is not just an everyday occurrence, it's an outward sign of an inward change. And what you're going to witness this morning uh, is some, somebody, and at the, at the second service, lots more, who, who are outwardly um, showing that something has happened on the inside. And in fact, this guy John became so identified with the new meaning of this word that they called him John the Baptizer, or as we would call him, John the Baptist. And he did something in a religious setting that had never been done before. He baptized people who wanted to turn from their old way of life and follow God. Why is it so important? I was brought up in a Christian tradition that didn't practice water baptism as well. So I, I got baptized uh, later when I came into, uh, into a church like ours. But you see, baptism is so important because you're buried beneath the water and then you're lifted up out of the water. And that's symbolic of what Jesus has done in our lives and what's happened when we've come to put our faith and our trust in God. Paul, the Apostle Paul says in Romans 6 verse 4, For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. We live new lives. So we were buried with Christ, that's the going into the water, and then as Christ was raised, and we'll celebrate that next Sunday, so we are raised to live a new life. Who should be baptised? 
In the New Testament, without exception, the only kind of baptism that was practiced was what we would call believer's baptism. We don't baptize babies at this church. We dedicate them to God and we pray for their parents. But we only baptize believers at whatever age that is when they make that decision for themselves that they want to put their faith and trust in Jesus. And, and you know, for us here, baptism is always connected to belief. Now let me say a few things. Baptism is not about perfection, it's about belief. So if you know any of the people who are being baptised, don't think for one minute that as they come out of the water, suddenly they are going to be perfect. They're not. This is not about perfection. That doesn't exist anyway. This is about belief. Baptism is not about knowledge. It's not about understanding everything about God or the Christian faith. This is about belief. Baptism is not about having every question answered and never having a doubt. I have doubts. I have questions. Baptism is not about understanding everything. Baptism is simply about belief. So what about belief in you? What, what did you believe in when you were a kid? Anyone believe in Santa? Tooth fairy? Bogeyman? Leprechauns? Villa winning the Premier League? Or wolves? We've heard a bit about that. You know, there's some funny things children believed in. Uh, I, I read these things uh, just, just yesterday. Uh, these are the kids' things. Someone, some, I believe that if I played with my belly button, I would pop open. I thought we were sewn together. This is one that some of you teachers will identify with. I believe, this kid said, that all teachers lived at school. I thought they slept in the classrooms and never went to the bathroom ever. Maybe some of you teachers believe that. Someone said this. I believe that instead of an Easter bunny, there was an Easter pig. I went to school and told my class, I will never forgive my dad for telling me that. <laughs> but you know, when you grow up, you wise up, don't you? When you grow up, you stop believing those things that you believed in when you are a kid. Now you're smarter. Now you're streetwise. Now you're cynical. I think inside kids, there is a, an innate sense of God. And I think what happens is that as we grow older, we quieten that voice and then we say, oh, that voice was childish or that voice was, that, that didn't belong to them. And we shut down that sense of belief in something and someone other than our experience. You know, and I, I, the amount of times that people have said to me, have asked me, why do you believe in God? People have asked me in schools and, and people have asked me in colleges and I've been asked this in prisons, uh, uh, not as an inmate, but as a visitor. And people have asked me in all kinds, my favourite is on aeroplanes. I often get into conversations on aeroplanes um, with people and uh, I get all kinds of interesting things. I was sat on this aeroplane once with this woman and uh, she was English and we were coming back from Africa. I was coming back from Africa, I was on my own and we were talking. She was a geologist, she was fascinating. We talked for an hour and a half and it was all fascinating and we, we were getting on well. And then she said, and what do you do for a living? Oh, no. Because <laughs> at that question, when you're on an aeroplane and you're getting on well, usually or often, if I say what I do, then that's the end of the conversation and it's awkward. And I said, well, why don't you guess what I do for a living? And she looked at me and she said, are you a porn director? Seriously? <laughs> Seriously, I don't know what I said. And then she laughed, and then she laughed. So she was joking, and I was relieved. And I said, no, I'm really not that. And I told her what I did. But then on another plane, oh, I had this fascinating conversation. And Alison, we'd been on holiday. Alison was here, I was here, a woman was here. And, uh, and we just, as we took off, uh, and we were talking, we ended up talking, and we talked all the flight home. Alison fell asleep. And this woman eventually told me about how her family had gone through a difficult situation, how she couldn't forgive a member of her family. And we talked about the power of forgiveness and all of that. And it's fascinating when people ask you why you believe what you believe. And you, you're hearing this morning and you've heard some stories of why people believe what they believe. But I want to tell you this morning um, that belief is incredibly important. And, you know, some people take time to look, look into and think about the fact, about the question, is there a God? Some people never even think about it. And I really credit those people this morning that have said, you know, I didn't believe, I didn't used to believe, but something happened and I, and I investigated. Or, and you heard, you've heard the word Alpha this morning. Alpha is, a, is, is an eight-week experience that we run here at the church and, and there's food involved and there's discussion involved and we have loads of people that come through Alpha. Many of them would say they're atheists at the start, but at least they're checking it out. At least they're checking it out. And we have an Alpha starting on Thursday, May the 2nd. 
It's not here in this building. It's in a pub uh, on the high street in Hagley. And we would, be br- we would love to see some of you there. If you're not yet a Christian and you're saying, hey, I don't even know whether God exists. Why don't you give it eight weeks of your life just to check it out? Just to check it out. There's an incredible verse in the book of John chapter 4. and There's a story where Jesus connects with this woman and um, they have this conversation and the woman begins to then believe in Jesus as the Son of God. And she goes and tells the rest of the community about it. And it says in John 4 verse 42, they said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this man really is the saviour of the world. What you're going to experience and witness this morning is is people, and you've heard it, people who didn't believe, have heard other people talk about it, but now believe for themselves. And before we get into that, I want to ask you, and I don't know everybody here this morning, do you believe for yourself? Have you come to the point where you could put your faith and your trust in Jesus? I want to tell you very quickly three reasons why I believe in Jesus, why I believe in God. Firstly, I believe in God because of what I see, what I see when I look around. You know, I don't know about you, but I, I find um, just, just humanity fascinating. I find, I find uh, j- just nature and, uh, and looking at some of that stuff fascinating. Do you know that the human eye can see 40 miles away, can see a great mountain, then it can refocus on a grain of sand on your finger? It's just fascinating to me. You know, 100 million light cells in the eye all work together to give us vision. Is that as a, a result of intelligent design or is that just an accident? What about mountains and rivers and oceans and valleys and forests? What about nature? A hummingbird, you know, can fly forward, backwards, side to side and upside down. It flaps its wings a hundred times a second. Its heart beats 1,200 times a minute and some males only need three seconds to mate. Some of you are thinking about that last piece of fact there, right there, aren't you? Did all this happen by chance? I don't think so. Charles Darwin himself. Often, often people look at Charles Darwin as the kind of, ooh, you know, to Christianity. Charles Darwin said, to suppose that the human eye with so many parts all working together could have been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd in the highest degree. When you look around, you know, is it possible that there, that there is all this incredible design without a designer. We look at a building and there's an architect. We look at a painting and there's a painter. We look at a sculpture and there's a sculptor. We listen to a piece of music and there is a composer. A friend of mine was on a TV debate many years ago. Some of you heard this and and he was on a TV debate with some atheists uh, and the atheist looked at him as a Christian and said, you're telling me, you're telling us that something created something out of nothing. That's absurd. This guy looked at him and says, and you're telling me that nothing created something out of nothing. That seems even more absurd. Maybe it takes more faith to believe that. What about all the wars that religion has caused? There's a fair point there. There really is. But I want you to know, it isn't faith that's caused those. It's people. It's people. And in the last few weeks, I've been to some parts of the world, which I'm just blown away by the privilege. A few weeks ago, I was in Cambodia at the Killing Fields where a sixth of the country was wiped out by the Khmer Rouge. I was in Vietnam, where millions of people have been killed. I, I, then last week, we were on holiday in Estonia. We went to some KGB, because uh, I'm a romantic. We went to some KGB cells. I know how to treat my wife. 30 years of marriage, we'll take you to the KGB cells. And we saw what Stalin did in that for decades. And, and you know, these, these worldviews all took God out of the culture. More people died under their regimes than in any of the religious wars put together. And we forget that. When you take God out, or you try to take God out, you take out all restraint, you take out all conscience, you take out all hope of goodness and light and life. When I, what I see causes me to want to believe in God. But also what I read causes me to put my faith in God. I look at the Bible, still the world's best-selling book. More historical evidence for the existence of Jesus than for Julius Caesar coming to Britain. The Bible stacks up historically, archaeologically. But, but what about science, I hear some of you say? Surely that disproves the existence of God. You know, some of the world's greatest scientists have also come to believe 
in God. Copernicus, Galileo, Isaac Newton, James Simpson, who paved the way for anesthetics, was asked, what do you think is the most important discovery of your life? He said, the day I discovered Jesus Christ. That's incredible. Today in the USA, 40% of biologists, physicists and mathematicians believe in a God who intervenes in human life. Einstein said, a legitimate conflict between science and religion cannot exist. Science without religion is lame and religion without science is blind. We need both. I want to say to you this morning, and, and, and if you're a believer this morning, hopefully this will strengthen you. If you're not, I hope it helps you to think I have come to believe in Jesus because of what I see, because of what I read, but ultimately because of who I've met. Because of who I've met. And that person is Jesus. I was like some of the guys that have said this morning, I was brought up in a Christian home and my parents, my father passed away nearly 10 years ago now, but, but they loved God and they loved us and they loved each other. We had a great home. And, you know, and I grew up in, Christ, in, in a church, going to church. I knew a lot of the stories. I knew all of that, but it wasn't real for me. And sometimes, you know, you, you listen to other people's stories and I was a little envious, you know, that, that person that, you know, that, that they, they, they were a drug addict and they were an alcoholic and this happened and that happened. And then at the age of six, they met Jesus. And do you know what I mean? All this kind of dramatic stuff. And it wasn't like that for me. I went to church and, and it just, oh, but you know, at 15, I knew I didn't know God. I knew about him, but I knew I didn't know him. And then, and then I started to drift away and disconnect and almost said to, said, said to God, God, if you're there, like, you, you, you're going to have to be real because I'm not going to keep doing this thing if you're not real. Then one night I, I, I was at the church and, and I dropped out of things and I was backing away and, and this old guy came and spoke. His name was Ivor, big white hair and he would have passed on years and years ago now. But, but he spoke and I don't know what he said, but I knew he believed it. And there was something from him and I gave my life to Jesus that night. And since then, my relationship with Jesus is growing and growing and and I don't know everything about it, but I know him. That's why I believe. What I see, what I read, but ultimately who I know. And I don't know about you, but and some of you will know this, but I've experienced unconditional love in Jesus, haven't you? And I've experienced relentless grace. And grace is that I don't deserve it, but God keeps giving it anyway. And I've also discovered a solid hope. And I've also discovered a supernatural power to help me do what I can't do on my own. To forgive that person that's hurt me. To make sense of that situation that doesn't make sense. That can only come from a relationship with Jesus. And guys, you can know this Jesus too. I want to invite the band to come back up. You can know him. And maybe you're here this morning because you've come to watch someone get baptised. Or maybe you're here because you just come in and I don't know where you're all at. But you can know him today. And it's great that we celebrate other people's stories. But what about your story? What about your story? And it may be that you've been in church a long time and you've been coming to church a long time. And you know about him, but do you know him? Do you know him? And I want to encourage you this morning because you can take another step after today. You can take another step after today. So what you can do after today is you can come back. We'd love to see you next week on Easter Sunday. You know, you can can sign up, get a ticket. They're free or just turn up next Sunday here at the 9.30. Or or, or you could try Alpha. That's a great opportunity. Again, sign up at Alpha. You could do that. You could take another step after today. But you also could take another step today. You could take a step right here, right now. You could say yes to him. Now you could say a big yes, like I'm in and I believe you and I'm all in. But you could also take, say a little yes. Like I don't quite know everything. I don't quite know whether I'm ready to commit, but I want to make a step on the journey. You could do that as well. And I want to give you an opportunity this morning. So I want to invite you just to close your eyes with me for a moment, everybody. Okay? And before we sing... And then before we baptise Michael, I want to give you an opportunity. Maybe many of you or all of you are Christians. I don't know that. But if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know Him, if you don't know His unconditional love and His relentless grace and His solid hope, you can. You can. You can say yes to Him today. 
So if that's you this morning and you just want to say yes, all I want to ask you to do, whether it's a big yes or a little yes, is just to put your hand up and then I want to pray for you today. Is there anyone here this morning on Palm Sunday, on Baptism Day, that wants to say yes to Jesus? Then you just pop your hand up. Okay, Father, we thank you so much for your presence. God, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you, Jesus, for just the joy of being able to celebrate this morning. Other people having that experience and that beginning that story of their relationship with you. And so, Lord, we want to just declare that you are great. You are absolutely great. And now, Lord, as we come and to experience and to watch a baptism, Lord, as we travel through this day and then through this week, God, we really pray. I pray for every single one of us that that our belief in you would be strengthened this week. That that the reason why we have this story would be, you just remind us again, like Andy has said, we were all once lost, but now we are found. We were all once blind, but now we see. We haven't got it all together, but we know you. And that's all that we need. So Jesus, we just pray that you would cause this to be an incredible day and a week of celebration and strengthen our belief in you, I pray. Maybe some of us, we have that belief in you, but maybe it's under pressure right now. Maybe we don't know how to work through certain things or maybe we're being put under pressure by other people. God, may our story, may our belief in you be strengthened today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Why don't we stand, guys? We're going to sing uh, while we get the baptistry ready. Um, And then we are going to immerse. We are going to submerge Michael. We're not going to murder him. Okay, we're going to submerse, submerge and immerse him in that water. And you know, for me, when I I watch this, I always just want to just thank God for what he's done in your life, don't you? And it's almost like taking you back to that moment when you got baptized. And listen, if you have belief and you have already, but you haven't got baptized for whatever reason... I want to challenge you, sign up today. Sign up today. Don't wait, do it today. July the 14th, the sign up sheet's out there. We put it out there because we're in faith, okay? If you've never been back, and you might say, oh, it's years ago I, I followed Jesus, but I just haven't done it for whatever reason. Don't wait any longer than you've already waited. Do it now. Do it now. Sign up today. And as we celebrate, the guys are going to come and uh, get the baptism ready, and then we'll baptise Michael. Bless you.